I'm Julie Newcomb of the University of Washington. I'm here to talk about our work verifying and improving Halide's term writing system with program synthesis. So some of you may be familiar with Halide. It's a language for image and tensor processing, and it's designed to give high performance. I have a snippet of code up here just to give you a flavor of it. Uh, the Halide compiler uses a reasoning engine to determine if it's safe to apply various optimizations. And in this talk, I'm going to tell you about why implementing this reasoning engine is challenging, uh, how we use formal methods to improve and strengthen this reasoning engine, and how we can think of this formal methods as tools to support developers in their work. So this reasoning engine is crucially important to the performance of the provided, uh, compiled code. Uh, we did an experiment where we removed the term rating system from the compiler, and we ran a standard benchmarking suite. We saw a 5x increase in compilation times and a 26 increase in run times. So basically without this reasoning engine, Halide can't fulfill its job of providing high performance code. And similar to the better the reasoning engine, the more performant code we should be able to get out of the compiler. So let's hit the stage and talk about a few cases where the Halide compiler's reasoning engine is used. Uh, for example, Halide used the Euclidean definition of division. This requires several instructions. But if we could show that the sign of the denominator is positive, we could save some instructions and substitute in the machine uh, division instruction instead. So here when we see a division taking place, we're gonna ask the reasoning engine if we can show that the uh, denominator is greater than zero. And if we, it, it can't show that, then we perform the optimization. Um, so in another example, we may have some expression that describes the extent of a loop. And here we're gonna ask the reasoning engine if it can simplify the loop extent expression, which is a common use case. And if we can show that the loop extent can be reduced to a constant, uh, we could do all sorts of useful things like fully unrolling the loop or maybe mapping it to CUDA threads uh, and so on. Uh, similarly, if we have some allocation and we could show that the uh, allocation size can be reduced to a constant, the constant is below a certain size, uh, we might be able to just put it on the stack rather than calling the malloc. So um, throughout this talk to start out, I'm gonna give a little uh, bit of background about the Halide compiler and term rating systems in general. And then I'm gonna take you through our work. Uh, first I'll talk about how we prove that the uh, full term rating system is sound. And then I'll show how we guaranteed that the uh, rewrite engine um, would always terminate. And finally, I'll show how we use program synthesis to automatically grow the, reasons, uh, the engine's reasoning power. And I wanna emphasize uh, two themes uh, throughout this talk. Uh, one is about how formal method techniques have been used to support developers working on Halide. And the other is all about um, how our work here uh, works under the undecidable theory of integers which presented some interesting challenges that I want to highlight. So the Halide reasoning engine for these tasks is implemented as a term rewriting system. Uh, term rewriting systems are a pretty simple but powerful idea. Uh, we have a set of rewrite rules, and each rule is a directed binary identity. And then through a series of rule applications, we can use these rules to transform expressions. Uh, so here's a simple example of a term rewriting system with just two rules, uh, which state that when we see uh, max of x and x, we can rewrite that to x. And when we see uh, x minus y plus y, we're also allowed to rewrite that to x. And here we have an il illustration of how these two rules can transform an expression. So the key idea here is that rewrite rules are just a list of ways in which we're allowed to manipulate symbols. They're purely syntactic, and they don't know anything about the semantics of the operation other than what is actually stated in the rules. Uh, for example, this term rating system doesn't know that addition is commutative. It doesn't contain that rule. So this max expression that I have on the lower right here uh, won't be simplified any further because our term writing system doesn't know that A plus B and B plus A are actually the same thing. So clearly, we'd like our term writing system to be as powerful as possible, but we do have to work within some limitations. Um, one of those is the performance requirements of the term writing system itself. The compiler calls the term writing system uh, thousands of times per compilation. It needs to be very fast, and it needs to use very little memory. And I won't really go into um, any more detail about this in this talk, but the need for performance informs a lot of the Halide term writing system's design decisions. So I'll refer you to the paper for more details on that. Um, the other kind of barrier to the term rating system's reasoning power is that the Halo expression language is actually undecidable. The expression language works over the infinite precision integers. And, contain, and since it contains multiplication and division, uh, Halo expressions can be nonlinear. And unfortunately, nonlinear integer arithmetic is undecidable. Um, what this means is that the term rating system can never be complete. It can never be perfect. Um, but even though it's impossible to fully solve this domain in the general case, we can still make a lot of progress in practical applications. So our goal is to do that, to make the, the TRS as strong as possible, while we kind of keep these limitations in mind. So now we're ready to jump into our work. And let's begin by talking about the proof of soundness that we've uh, provided. So the task here is pretty straightforward. We need to show that um, for every rule in the term writing system, it's semantic preserving. Every time we use the term writing system to rewrite an expression, the expression that we get out has to be semantically equivalent to the expression that we put in. 
Um, so since we're working in this undecidable theory, there is no single authority or oracle that we could use to establish ground truth here. Um, so we're gonna have to uh, appeal to, to multiple sources. Um, so when we did verification, we modeled the halide expression language in SMT2, and then we translated each rule into a query for an SMT solver, which in our case was Z3. Z3 was able to verify 88% uh, of the rule set. Uh, the remainder either timed out or returned unknown, because Z3 is sort of just as limited by this uh, undecidability as, as we are. Um, so there was this remaining 12% of rules that required a human to step in, and we used the proof assistant cock to prove the soundness of those remaining rules. So we did indeed find uh, four unsound rules, even though the rules had been both unit tested and fuzz tested. And I have here an example of one of those unsound rules here on the slide. Um, you can see in the sort of highlighted boxes, there was a typo in the predicate guard over the rule. Um, it should be uh, C0 is greater than zero and not C1. And also the predicate uh, needed to ensure that uh, C1 divided by C0 was not zero for the rule to be correct. Um, so we submitted patches that fixed these unsound rules. And we now had a formal proof that the rule set was completely sound. We'd uh, ruled out a, a class of bugs completely. And that's great. That's what we were uh, hoping to do. But it turns out that having the machinery of formal verification in place had this unexpected benefit. So while we were working on this project, Halide changed its semantics for division. Uh, previously, division by zero was undefined behavior. Um, but under the new semantic, division by zero now equals zero. Um, so this was a pretty big change. Um, are the rules still sound? So to find this out, all we had to do was slightly amend our sort of semantic modeling, and then basically just push button, verify the rule set again using Z3. Um, once again, we did have some rules that Z3 could not verify. We had to prove those in COC, which required uh, some human effort, but we were able to leverage a lot of the existing proofs. And we found that 44 rules were incorrect and needed to be patched. And we had a proof that all of the other rules uh, were correct. Um, so on the slide, I have a few example rules that were correct under the original semantics, but incorrect where uh, dividing by zero yields zero. Um, so this is a case where using formal verification actually frees up developers to make changes like this. Um, otherwise, this change would have required a lot of time, a lot of testing, a lot of uncertainty. So now we know that we have a, a sound rule set, but there's another class of bugs that we want to eliminate. We want to prove that the term rating system will always terminate no matter what. So term rating systems are not guaranteed to terminate. And here's a simple example that will convince you of this fact. Uh, imagine we had just a single rule that said that we were allowed to rewrite um, x plus y to y plus x. Um, which is clearly fine. We could apply that rule to um, one expression over and over and over and get into this infinite loop, never terminate. So given that terminating systems are not guaranteed to terminate, how do we know that the halide terminating system will terminate? And in fact, non-termination bugs have been observed in the past. And what that looks like to the user is that the compiler just hangs and gets into this infinite loop, eventually throws a stack overflow error and quits. And it's not at all clear to the user you know, why that happened. And from a developer's point of view, it's pretty difficult to look at a collection of over a thousand rules and figure out if there's some expression that could connect uh, some rules uh, into a cycle like this. Um, and because that's the case, the rule set is actually pretty brittle in the sense. Um, even if we're not seeing a non-termination failure right now, um, if we added a new rule or even deleted an existing rule or moved a rule around, we couldn't end up causing a new non-termination failure. And in fact, this has happened in the past as well. So what we're gonna do is eliminate these rule errors completely by proving the halide rule set will always terminate. And we're going to do this using some machinery called a reduction order. A reduction order is a total order defined over terms. So um, for example, let's define a reduction order that states if one term has more addition operations than another, it can be ordered as greater, uh, as uh, you see it in this example on the slide. Um, so for every rule, if we can show that its left-hand side is strictly greater than its right-hand side, then we know that every written, written expression will move monotonically in a decreasing direction along the order that we've defined. So it would be impossible for any subset of rules to form a cycle. We would always have to terminate. Uh, so our task is to devise an ordering that will fit the exis existing halide rule set. If we can show that such an order exists, then we have a proof of termination. So the rule set is large and is fairly complex. So we were not able to define a single simple order that covered the full rule set. Uh, but fortunately, the lexicographic composition of two reduction orders is itself a reduction order. And so we were able to devise this compositional reduction order. And I have a fragment of it here on the slide. Um, our final ordering covered all but eight of the existing rules. And we were able to uh, either delete or modify those eight rules, at which point um, we were fully covered. We had our proof of termination. And as long as any new rules obey this ordering, 
um, Halo developers are free to add, uh, delete, or reposition rules, and they will still have this, uh, this nice ter uh, termination guarantee. And we realized as we were working on this that we were not just proving termination because any strict order would have given us a termination guarantee. Um, the ordering that we were devising was actually capturing something really interesting about the rules themselves. So the purpose of the term writing system is to simplify expressions, but the notion of what it means for an expression to become simpler is Im un imprecise. It actually encompasses a lot of different goals. Uh, for example, Halide developers want Halide's um, expressions to become shorter. They would like to do strength reduction, meaning they would like to replace uh, expensive operations with cheaper ones. Um, they would like to group constants so they could do constant foldings uh, and so on. And you'll see um, in this compositional regression order that we've defined, um, all these different goals are, are kind of captured precisely and uh, placed in this priority. Um, so now we've formalized exactly what simplification means. And that's going to set us up really well for our last task, which is rule synthesis. So the final way that we want to improve the term rating system is by giving it greater reasoning power. Uh, we could think of the previous two tasks was uh, aiding in the maintenance of the term rating system. And we're now going to aid in improving it. In our two previous tasks, uh, we defined a grammar and we defined a specification, basically. Uh, so it sounds like we're ready to do synthesis. And our general goal is to synthesize new rules that we could add to the rule set that will enhance its reasoning power. Basically, we're looking for new facts or equivalences about nonlinear integer arithmetic that the terminating system doesn't already know. Um, but the space of valid equivalences is infinitely large, even if it's uh, filtered by a reduction order. So from that infinitely large set um, of potential rules, which rules should we add? And uh, as we were trying to figure out how to address this problem, our insight was that we are not uh, trying to solve the full space of halide expressions. Uh, in fact, we can't. We know that's undecidable. Uh, but what we want to do is solve expressions that were actually encountered by term rating systems when compiling halide programs. And the expressions that it encounters um, have some bias. They're not dran drawn randomly from the expression language. Um, so our strategy was to um, find expressions that the compiler would actually encounter under halide under realistic circumstances that the term writing system could not make any further progress on. And we'd then try to synthesize new rules that would simplify those expressions further. So I'd like to very briefly sketch out our synthesis pipeline here. And uh, there's much, much fuller detail in the paper, so I refer you to that. Um, but uh, we will start with some input expression that the term writing system can't make any further progress on, but we think you know it should be able to. And we're going to crunch that expression down a little bit, and we're going to make it more general then we're going to get a candidate left-hand side expression. Um, so now we're ready to do synthesis. We're going to ask that the synthesizer, if it can find a right-hand side that is semantically equivalent to the left-hand side, but order it strictly less in our reduction order. Um, and we're going to do this using a counterexample guided synthesis loop. Um, if we're successful in doing that, then we have a candidate rule. We're going to generalize that rule by replacing any constants with fresh variables. And if necessary, we'll also synthesize a predicate guard over those new variables. Um, again, using a C just like loop. Um, so now we have a procedure for finding and adding new rules to the rule set. So I'll highlight a few case studies from our evaluation showing that the synthesis pipeline was actually helpful. Uh, so first, we went through the Halide issue tracker. We found five bug reports that involved changes to the term rating system. Uh, we took input expressions from the book report, uh, bug reports, and we synthesized patches that were as good or better from, uh, than the human authored fixes. Um, this obviously represents a saving in human effort. And the patches are also um, proven to be correct. So we don't have to worry about introducing any new errors. Um, so then we wanted to know if we could do kind of a big wholesale improvement of the term rating system. And we put together a corpus of about 100,000 expressions from realistic pipelines, as well as uh, a body of expressions that um, we encountered in the wild. And we let the synthesizer kind of chew on that for a day or so, and we ended up with 4,000 new rules. And we added those to the term rating system, um, just kind of copy pasted them in. There was no human screening. And we ran our benchmarking suite. And um, in so doing, we'd actually set a pretty hard task for ourselves because the Halide compiler is very mature. It's been hand tuned for a couple of year ne years now. Um, but we were able to see a benefit in the peak memory usage of the compiled pipelines. Um, in some cases, the, the benefit was 50% uh, lower. And we also saw no appreciable slowdown um, in compilations times. And this basically validated our strategy of adding a lot of rules to the rule set. Um, to call back to the theme of using formal methods to support developers, uh, we had some observations of, about Halide developers using the synthesizer as an assistant. Um, so in one case, the developer was looking at an expression that uh, he thought should simplify, but it currently wasn't. 
And rather than write a rule by hand, he actually searched through the set of rules that we'd synthesized in our big experiment and found a rule that did what he wanted. Um, in another case developer, Han wrote 24 new rules, um, but then he fed their left-hand sides into the synthesizer and essentially resynthesized them. So this was kind of a, a means of letting the synthesizer check his work. And we found these um, anecdotes of um, sort of a human synthesizer collaboration be very encouraging. So this work is ongoing and there's uh, several directions here that I'm excited to pursue going forward, but I'll close here and I'd be happy to take any questions.